Hi, I'm Jim from TheModelShipwright.com. We get a lot of questions about what's the best first model. The answer to that question hinges upon a number of factors. Are you a plastic modeler who wants to move to wood ship models? Do you have woodworking experience? Do you have tools? Or are you just new to modeling entirely? And perhaps most important, how much do you want to spend? Because everyone answers those questions differently and those different answers may lead to different kits. We're producing a number of box opening videos that feature a variety of kits that all might make a good first model for you. In today's video, we'll be highlighting the Mini Mamoli series of model kits. If you're familiar with the brand Mamoli, you probably know that they lost all their facilities in a fire in 2014, and the product line was purchased by Dusek a newer modeling company. However, the kits we'll be looking at today were from the pre-fire era and were made in Italy. Momoli's wide range of model ship kits has always had a reputation for being well designed and historically accurate. But based on the Dusek kits I've seen, I don't think there's any worry. Uh, if anything, they may actually be improved. But I would add an asterisk to the term historically accurate. Aside from limitations in the source material, that is, the plans on which the model is based are probably not original builder's plans. They may have been drawn by a naval architect that wasn't even alive when the vessel was in service. And what he had to work with may have been incomplete. Add to that, historical accuracy is always a balance between how big the model is and at what point does it go beyond the price that most people are willing to pay. When I say Mamoli had a wide range of model ship kits, I'm not talking just about subject matter, but size. At one end of the spectrum, Mamoli kits can cost hundreds of dollars and produce a model nearly a meter long. At the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the mini Mamoli kits, which are designed for beginners or even children. Well, I should put a parenthetical on that. Children under close adult supervision. They don't specifically say on the box anywhere that they're for beginners, but they make the assumption you don't even have micro drill bits, and they include a pin which they suggest heating in a flame and using it to put the holes where the eye bolts go. Which, again, let's go back to the children under close adult supervision in that case. These kits are also built to a smaller scale and retail for about $80, although you can get these on auction sites much cheaper. A quick note on scale for those of you that are new to modeling. The scale is the factor to which the model is reduced from the original ship. This number is normally expressed as either a ratio, say 1 to 96, or as a fraction where it's 1 over 96. In both of those examples, the 1 is a single unit of whatever the measurement unit you're using. For example, if you're using inches, uh, one inch would equal 96 inches. If you're anywhere else in the world, you'd probably be using millimeters, so one millimeter would equal 96 millimeters. Now that particular scale I gave you the example of, one to 96, might seem completely arbitrary if you use the metric system, but in the imperial system, there's a certain logic to it because we have a base 12, where 12 inches equals one foot, and inches are normally divided into halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, etc. Because of that relationship, American scales tend to run uh, 1 24th, where a half an inch equals a foot, uh, 148, where a quarter of an inch equals a foot, or 196, where 1 eighth of an inch equals a foot. With the metric system, you're not constrained by that arcane imperial system, so with kits that are made outside of the U.S., you'll often see scales of 1 50th, 175th and 1 100th. Okay, now back to the show. So when I say that my Mamoli kits are in a smaller scale, what I mean is that second number of the ratio or the fraction is a larger number. For instance, the Mamoli kit MV26, which is the larger version of the America Sailing Yacht, is 1 66th scale, or 1 to 66, where the Mini Mamoli is a scale of 1 to 140. 
and even within the uh, Mini Mamoli series, there's a pretty broad range of subjects. So in order to get them all in the same size box, they use what in the old days we used to call box scale. In other words, whatever the scale they needed to make it to fit it in the box. So where the America is uh, 1 to 140, the Sailing Yacht Britannia is 1 to 177. As I noted earlier, creating a scale model is always a trade-off between the size of the model and the amount of detail. A smaller model means there's less detail that you can engineer into it. The difference in detail between the larger Mamoli America kit and the mini Mamoli kit is fairly distinct because the larger kit is nearly a meter long where the smaller kit is uh, 360 millimeters long. So it's less than half the size of the other one. For example, where the 1 to 66 scale America has fairly detailed rigging, the Mini Mamoli America eliminates many of the lines and replaces the blocks and dead eyes with knots and little tiny eye bolts. But since the Mini Mamoli America can often be found for $70 US and the larger version will set you back more than $200, it's not really fair to compare them head to head. On the other hand, the Mini Mamoli America is much less of a time commitment than the larger kit and can probably be completed in 20 to 40 hours, putting it in good first model territory. Out of curiosity, I wanted to compare the Mini Mamoli America to another kit in the Mini Mamoli line just to see how different the hulls were, as one place a manufacturer might skimp would be in the expensive process of carving a solid wood hull. I'm not going to single out any one company, but it wasn't that long ago that introductory kits especially those aimed at children, often had very similar hulls with just a different sailing rig to differentiate them. As you can see in the close-up, the two hulls are dramatically different in shape. They could, both could use a little bit of shaping, especially in the keel where it's a little bit wide, but I think they uh, represent the model that they belong to pretty well. Both kits have a single page combination plan and instructions that's double-sided that has a full-size model of the sails for you to cut them out. Hey, Editing Jim here. I just wanted to break in. Um, the instructions for this kit are to be kind, uh, vague. Um, I'm not sure if that's just the English translation or if they're all like that, but if you're not really familiar with the parts of ship models, um, you might want to do a little bit of, of advanced reading. Uh, a couple of books that I would suggest. Um, the Neophyte Ship Modeler's Jack Stay. This is one from Model Shipways. Um, it's a little more old school, but it's got some good stuff for solid hull models uh, for shaping them and, and a lot on the detailing as well. Uh, another one, how to build first rate ship models from kits. This one is specifically geared towards building kits and has a lot of good information for detailing kits and uh, improving on them. Another one which, uh, this again is a little bit more uh, Arcane. This one is the Ship Model Builder's Assistant by Charles G. Davis. Um, if you're not familiar with Davis, he was a, a naval architect in the early part of the 20th century who produced a lot of books on model shipbuilding. This is one of the best. It's got all kinds of hints and tips for detailing models. Uh, it might be geared a little bit more towards scratch built, but a lot of those techniques can be used to detail a kit model as well. So I just wanted to make you aware of that uh, before we move on to the next thing. Both kits have the same vacuform plastic insert that in one compartment across the bottom holds all of the wood for the bulwarks for the planking and the masts. And then across the top we have a compartment for the rigging thread, a compartment with the brass parts which are uh, tiny eye bolts and mast hoops and some small nails. Another one has a package of white metal parts with some plastic detail parts. Then we have chunks of wood to make the deck furniture, 
each one has an ensign to be flown and the aforementioned pin just in case it has to be said don't do that burning pin thing if you don't already have a pin vise with some micro drill bits they're relatively cheap so go ahead and buy one now because you'll thank me later the kits include a piece of cloth for the sails and full-size patterns on the plan but i would suggest using silkspan instead and silkspan is a model airplane covering tissue that's much much thinner than the sailcloth material that they give you in the kit. I'll put a link in the description to a video by Tom Loria where he demonstrates how to make sails from silkspan and gets a very convincing result. While these are fairly rudimentary uh, models the way they're designed, if you wanted to super detail them there's a lot of things you could do. For instance Model Expo has dead eyes and rigging blocks that are only 2.5 millimeters across those even may be a little bit large, but you can probably sand them down and get to a pretty close approximation of what size you would need for these models. So I think uh, for the price range and the quality of the kits, I think these would both be a good first model for someone, even if they haven't had any woodworking experience, or even a fun little project for a more advanced modeler who has a little bit of time to spare. Hey, once again, thanks for watching the videos. We hope you like it. If you do, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and also the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when we post new content. And as always, thanks for watching.